to the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. It's kind of like a double threat, man. We have like one of the pioneers that actually helped build this culture <laughs> along with one of the new young upstarts that's actually driving this thing right now. Yeah, Ladies yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, history's in the building. Leo Cohen's in the house along morning, with the one, the morning. only, Young Thug. Woo! You dig. Woo! You dig. Brother, you are one of the most elusive people in hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, if you search the internet and scramble around, you don't really find too many Young Thug interviews. So straight out the gate, we want to say thank you for giving us your time and your energy. Thank you. And for coming through us. today. And then you came through with the OG. Yeah, How long you and uh, Mr. Cohen been rolling together? Uh, about four, about three, four years now. Wow, that's amazing, man. So, what did you see in Young Thug, Leo, that like you know like made you want to get behind him in his movement? Well. I mean, he's one of the most creative artists I've ever met. But creative is not sufficient enough. The fact of the matter is, is he's courageous. He doesn't care what other people think. He's going to continue pushing the boundaries of this art form. And this art form is really important to me. And to have the opportunity to work with someone creative like that and not stuck on stupid like all the other rappers that <laughs> want to just follow the leader and not try to push the boundaries and think that this is just a game, you know, and and um, have no creativity. They just want to regurgitate because they think someone else has done it right. Mm -hmm. So there's, there, there's no expression of self. And so when I got the opportunity to... Um, work with him first of all i had to chase him down he had no idea i thank you for the kind words but i called him i emailed him he had no idea who i was <laughs> and um it took a long time to finally connect and so it's been a great blessing for 300 and my career to get a chance to work with him you know this is a an interesting situation because the fact of the matter is he's only elusive because he loves staying in the studio and creating. This is an, a, a very new experience, coming and doing radio interviews and understanding this part. And so um, um, thank you for having us. No doubt. And Young Thug, you've been getting a lot of cosigns. I mean, like, I mean, I was, re I was checking out an interview you guys did uh, the other day, and it was uh, reported that you have 40 songs in the can with Kanye West. And Yeezy don't just work with everybody. Like, were you nervous going into that situation? Uh, Kanye nah, I was nervous. nervous. Going into the, I wasn't nervous going into the situation because of maybe where I come from. I came from like a big, big, big tragedy. You know what I'm saying? I came from a tragedy. Right. So I guess I'm just calm and cool and collected. But yeah, I was nervous because I was like, uh, I might say something plain or some regular stuff. You know what I'm saying? And he, he not like that. I could have said the dog is. Cute, he would have <laughs> jumped through the ceiling. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he has, the, he has the, he he got the, pe he, he got the, the the best vibe in the world. Easy to work with, I imagine, right? Yeah. If 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 he's if he's if he's grabbing you and bringing you into the studio, I guess he kind of wants your energy, right? Yes. And yes. it seems like a lot of people draw from your energy, like you know, like people that you associate yourself with sometimes artistically. I kind of see your influence rub off on them. Like, you know, when you first, you know, was running with, like, you know, Birdman and all them, you know, Wayne's music changed a little bit. Do you feel, you know, do you, do you, like, in your head, do you feel that whole trend set of vibe? Or are you just, you know, just kind of oblivious to it all and just keep rolling? Uh, I feel it. You know, I can't, when I came in the game, I came in as, I came in different than everybody. You know what I'm saying? So, so I, I already knew I was going to be a trend set. I knew people, a lot of people were going, you know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> sound like me or, or you know what I'm saying and I that's something that I already knew so that's some that's something that I won't ever have a problem with okay. I was, I'm just calm I knew for a fact I'm, I was a trendsetter and somebody was gonna copy it where mm -hmm. now like you're going into your personal life a little bit you are one of 11 siblings yes so mm -hmm. like you know it's it's hard to show love to all the kids equally did you find yourself by yourself a lot of times just kind of like having to entertain yourself and that's where you found the music or you know, or, you know, or were you like always just buddied up with the rest of your brothers and sisters? Uh, I'm not just talking. Yeah, we, I've always been buddied up. You know, everything we went through. You know, my mom never gave none of her kids up. You know what I'm saying? She got four or five um 
um, kids that, you know what I'm saying, and, and we always been close. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't really have too many friends just because I'm, because my immediate family is so big. I got six kids. You know what I'm saying? And I, my mom got 11 kids. So, you know what I'm saying? And my sisters and brothers got kids and kids and kids. You know what I'm saying? The immediate family might be 60 to 100. So I don't even really need too many friends. You don't need no extras. Not at all. And I would imagine it's hard to make friends, like, you know, once you pop because you don't know what people right. yeah, want you know the, you to be in your life for. Right. You know like I, it, I always be like, what's the point? Got you. Are you tight <laughs> with all your baby mothers? Nah. That's my song. <laughs> nah. <laughs> it's out of here. Yeah, I put out my song, they mad. But yeah, they they getting back on on track. I gotta play a lot of that. Got mm-hmm. you. So young thug, speaking of kids, so I'm sure everybody's well clothed because you have a clothing line. Yeah. So tell us about your clothing line. Uh I started it probably a year after I uh, popped off, which was probably two thousand in two thousand eleven or twelve, and I, 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 this is this, I, I always wanted to be into fashion more than rap. Mm-hmm. If I had the chance, if I had the, the, the choice to be a rapper or, or a designer, a designer, I would most definitely choose designer. Even if I could get a million, even if I can get a billion dollars rapping, I'd rather take a million dollars to be a designer. That's where you and Kanye click it, cause he's the same way. He likes design as well. Yes, mm-hmm. he's, he, and, and all day he's draw, he draws out. He just drawing paper all day. He just he probably be sketching Kim. You so, <laughs> <laughs> yes. so, so thug. What's the biggest misconception about Young Thug? Uh, I don't know. I think you yeah. should ask other people because, really, at the at the, he doesn't pay attention. You know, so, you know, if you don't pay attention, then you don't know what the misconceptions are. Well, what is something that you would like for people to know about you that they don't know? Uh, I'm brilliant. I'm, I'm charming. <laughs> I know that's right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> said I'm, I'm calm. Brilliant. Right. You are very laid back. I just want to just kick back in my seat and mm-hmm. just, you know. It, it seems like a, a <laughs> lot of time. quiet. You're reserved. Like, you know, yeah. I, I, you probably spend a lot of time in your head thinking, right? Yeah. Plotting the Being next creative. thing, the next situation. Yes, yeah. studio. Because uh, you're, one, you're one of those uh, uh, musical head spaces where uh, you don't you don't write the stuff down, they were saying, right? No. So you, <laughs> they fire up a beat, you just kind of just close your eyes, get into your little special place in your head and just go for it. And just record. It's like Biggie. Until it's over. Yeah. Like, yeah. How, many, how many takes does it usually take? Do you usually take a pass and then, like, go make. back through it again, keep what you like? It used to be an hour, two hours, three hours. Now it's like 15 minutes. Wow, that's great. So what's like, what's your necessities going in? Like, you know, like, do you got to spark one up or, you know, eat an apple? Like, you know, what do you do before you get ready to get it popping in the lab? Probably D U D R U G. you know what I'm saying? Twist it. What's your drug of choice? Uh, Huh? What's your drug of choice? It's 1017. Free goo up. Oh. All right. I'm on uh, I can't do drugs. Herb, okay, yeah, got yeah, you, got yeah. you. No, yeah, he did salad, yeah. spinach, yeah. <laughs> Popeye style. Yeah, respect that. So, <laughs> you know, in addition to the music being infectious as it is, catchy, like you know, people just catch the vibe, they catch the rhythms, they rock with it. You know, people always, uh, you know, talk about your, your fashion sense. Like, you know, ah, oh, Young Thug is wearing dresses. He must be gay. But like, people fail to realize that, like, in the '80s, when you look at rockers, cats like David Lee Roth. Um, full force. They kept it <laughs> mad and dry. David Bowie. David, David Bowie. David Bowie. Respect yes. to the OG. James Brown. James Brown. You know, they kept it mad and dry. It's like, how do you feel about when people try to put that label on you? Uh, leave you back to what Leo was telling you earlier. I don't pay attention to nobody, man. I'm on a high horse. I'm, I ain't, I ain't uh, planning on coming down. Obsessed with myself. Self-centered. No, that's right. I, I love it. I don't even know how to read. I just, <laughs> really? Yeah, I'll be on to the next. <laughs> I, I, I right. could tell you a misconception that um, I had and what I think a lot of people don't understand is this this rap game is hard. Mm-hmm. And the reality is it takes a lot of work. And the misconception I think people have in general is this is just shopping in the mall and, and signing autographs. The fact of the matter is he's done a million hours in the studio. Okay, so 
just like you come to your craft, you come to this studio, you spend hours and hours and hours perfecting your craft. Mm -hmm. That's what he does. It's I've not seen in my 35 years someone spend more time in a studio than than Doug. And if I could paint the picture for everybody out there listening, I mean, Mr. Leo Cohen mm -hmm. comes from LL Cool J, Run DMC, a lot of legends and pioneers in the game. So what you're saying, out of all those people you've worked with, no one is putting the type of work in the studio the Young Thug is. Not at all. That is insane. Not even close. How about that? Wow. So Slime Season 3 is the new album that we're getting ready to unleash on the people this week, right? Yes, fair words, yes. Now, putting the type of work and hours into the studio that you've been doing, how many joints would you say you actually have in the can that we ain't even heard yet? Like, if you was to put just a, a, a number on these songs. Yeah, 5,000. 5,000? Five, Ridiculous. 5,000 oh songs? Here's the problem. The problem is he has so <laughs> many songs that some, like, real gems are at the bottom of the pile yeah. that are completely forgotten by everybody, including him. Mm -hmm. What's that song that we, we found? Um, Pacifier. One of my favorite joints. And I said, oh, my God, what's this? He said, oh, you know what? I forgot about that. I did that four years ago. Wow. That's you know? so Wow. <laughs> so that's what's, uh, you know, a little bit dangerous for us because some of these gems could be, like, in the hard drive, like, deep in the hard drive. Right. Number 4,899. <laughs> <laughs> that's just insane, wow. man. So, like, I mean, so in addition to, like, the insane work ethic, uh, you know, there's the dramas and the beefs and the problems that come along with being in this business. Do you feel safe? You know, just in the current climate of everything that's going on. Because, you know, there's there's wars that you've heard about publicly. There's secret wars that we probably don't know about. D do you feel comfortable? Yes, of course. No fear. From, 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 for no one. No fear. I don't, yes, I'm always comfortable. If I wasn't comfortable, I'd, I'd, be, I'd be put up. I'm, hey, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't even read. I don't pay attention to it. So I might be easy. I might be an easy target to get because I don't, I don't pay attention. I don't care, you know. But you know, they, get, they go both ways. So I feel that. Well, with you being in the studio so much and spending so much time in there, how do you have time to juggle your life, like with your kids and your family and your fiance and your baby's mamas and all that stuff? Ninety percent of the ninety percent of the time, my kids are. At the studio with me. I know that's right. I got a studio. I built a studio in my house. Okay. So I wouldn't have to be outside as much. Got you. That's but cool. Yeah. I, whatever. I always, I surround everything. I combine everything into the studio. So if, even if I'm chilling with my kids or my my fiance or anybody, it's mainly in the studio because I always I'm always thinking. You know what I'm saying? And it's, and right. And so you artist. just bring everything you love yes. around you. That's my what's job. up. Mm -hmm. My job is. That's great. Now, like, you, you're currently on a wave of, like, you know, this new batch of artists that actually kind of celebrate the whole marriage thing. You know, because before, like, a lot of artists come out, you know, they kind of keep it under wraps because they don't want to, like, affect their sales. You know, uh, my man uh, Kevin Gates, very, you know, very public about his, his wedding to his lady. Mm -hmm. uh, J. Cole tried to keep his situation under wraps, but it, it's been known for a long time that he had a girlfriend. D do you feel that you're alienating any females or are you you proud of your situation and you want the world to know? Uh, man, we come from we come from a place where we just we probably meet them, turn them up, um, feed them, and usually send them on. You know what I'm saying? So one of them stuck around, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but when, I don't I don't ever look at it as as I ain't, I'm not selfish. You know what I'm saying? Cause coming from a big home, got I ain't you. selfish. So even if I can't ever feel like. <laughs> I'm turning somebody up and you know what I'm saying you just said one of them stuck around like, <laughs> like, a, like cat. a cat it was only her <laughs> choice like did, what, what did you have to contribute to that she stuck oh. around you let her stick around so yes, you must have fell in love young thug will fall in love no you ain't in uh, love yeah of course oh you just sh oh okay <laughs> 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 I don't you know, know which to read <laughs> okay she a little nose too she probably be listening oh okay okay word but yeah that's it's hard to shut that guy over there up. So. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. Love is in the air. 
<laughs> but you know, but as the star continues to you know to rise, because like I mean, you've had a hell of of, of the last two years. Yeah. So you get bigger. So how do you fight the temptation? Because like your music attracts a certain type of fans. Like women love your stuff. So how do you protect what you have at home, but yet you know shield it off? Because I imagine boxes coming at you like the Spears in Three Hundred. Nah, you know the movie. Yeah. No, yeah. Oh. yeah. Uh. <laughs> it's a man world, you know. They must stay in any place. It's a man's world. I'm not. I'm not. That, I'm not that hype as a girl. You know what I'm saying? So, I guess that's the main reason why it worked out for me. Cause I'm. Cause I ain't really pressed. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't mind if I wasn't situated, but I ain't pressed to just yeah. to be dealing with all types of girls. I ain't. I don't really care. Yeah, a great 20th century composer by the name of Biz Marquis once said, I was never into girls, I was just into my music. Yeah. That's kind of your vibe, right? Yes. There it is. <laughs> now, I would imagine, right? Did you ever like have like a job, like a regular job before all this? Like where'd you work? Uh you know, it's, it's, you know, the streets and Ski, Ski mask, mask way. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. you never like, you know, filled out a job application, had to punch no clock, wait for that check on Friday, stack it to go buy like your favorite pair of kicks? Never ever. Man. Well, I worked at Wendy's. <laughs> that was my first job. Tossing salads. Oh, uh, well, they was talking. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I ain't. You know, I, I, think, it, I think it was y'all generation because like my mom mm -hmm. and my dad, they always had jobs, jobs, yeah. jobs. I guess when, you know, y'all... You guys generation was y'all parents was probably a little stricter. Oh yeah. Very Definitely. much stricter. I got yeah. whippings with switches and extension cards. <laughs> we ain't doing that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't doing it. Did I you ever get a beaten for anything? Cause like imagine with eleven other siblings, it's kinda easy to fall in the blind spot and nobody really quite know what you're doing. Nah, yeah. They was on you. My dad and my mom, but especially my dad, that nigga lame as a mother. That nigga, that nigga Are you the crazy. youngest? The one before the youngest. Okay, well, you didn't catch so, it probably as bad as the youngest, youngest or though. the oldest. I didn't catch it as bad as the oldest. What's mm -hmm. the last thing you got a whipping over? Uh, <laughs> probably my, my dad told my teacher, um, if you get out of line, chastise him. Ooh. Even if it comes to putting your hands on him, Ooh. chastise him. Then call me, and then I'm going to come chastise him. And they done took this to the head. This man <laughs> called himself and put his hand on me. So um, I got the problem with the teacher. I got kicked out of school. Wow. What school did you go to? Uh, Price Middle School. I had to go to TEP, though. So after that, so you, did you continue school after you got kicked out of middle school? or did you I had to go to CEP. They signed, they, they signed me to go to CEP for four years. What's CEP? CEP. CEP. What's that? It's, a, it's like a, it's a bad behavior school. Oh, okay. Okay. And I went to Tribunal, and I lost the trial, so I had to go there for four years. When I got out, I went to Washington High School. Like a, a semester. So, yeah. Yonder, who who are you the closest to? In the family. In the family, music world. Uh, Leo. Leo. Leo Corn. Yes, sir. In That's family, a good man to be close to. Yeah, good man. He's a good guy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this Very guy is smart. Not yeah. gonna steal you wrong at all. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, because the crazy thing is, like, you know, anybody who really knows hip hop and hip hop culture, like, you know, like. You used to always see his name on the back of the album jackets. Yo, you know, you know Every Leo jacket. Cohen, <laughs> Russell Simmons, Rick Rubin. I mean, you come from a hip-hop dream team. Like, when's the last time you talked to Russell and Rick? Um, Russell and Rick and I were at New Year's Eve in St. Bart's with um, 80 other people seeing Prince perform for two and a half hours on the beach. Nice. Yeah. So we're all together mm -hmm. in St. Bart's. Okay. Really yep. nice seeing them. Do you, you do yoga, too? I do not do yoga. Okay. I'm too tall for that. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I, I can't touch my toes. I know that's right. Me neither. Don't feel bad. So, I mean, you, you have so many crazy stories, I imagine, in the mm -hmm. back of your head. Like, what's the craziest story that you could tell us about just being out there on the road with some of these legendary acts? Like, something that maybe nobody knows. I, 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 there's so many crazy stories, but the one that just came to my mind was the whole riot in, in Long Beach um, when all the... Um, Run DMC just hit the stage. Oh, no, it was Houdini that hit the stage. And um, the problem was that the changeover was too long, so the kids were spending too much time in between sets. Like, we didn't have a comedian and didn't turn the, the show fast enough. And um, Los Angeles is, like, really in um, the middle of severe gang issues. So mm -hmm. 
um, the two gangs started going apeshit and, and destroyed the whole venue. And I had to run out with uh, Run DMC, and, and it was it was crazy. And ended up on CNN and, and all sorts of stuff. It hmm. was pretty wild. Like, was there ever a part in hip hop history where you're like, you know what? I am white and I have an education. Get me the fuck out of here. Like, you ever thought about leaving the business? No, not at all. I love doing this. I mean, I wake up every morning with the singular thought that maybe today's the day that I'm going to bump into someone who's going to change the course of pop culture. Hmm. So, you know, the fact that I get to um, experience, we've been on the road now for the last four days going from town to town to town to town, sometimes two towns in one in one city <coughs> in one day, <coughs> and touching people and seeing whole communities. We're in the middle of this interview yesterday, and all of a sudden, um, Thug's main guy says, whoa, 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 whoa. I said, we're in the middle of, a, of an interview. He says, oh, no, Cam Newton wants to say hi, because... We're on the Charlotte radio station, so Cam Newton's on FaceTime, and and we're saying <laughs> we need we need proof. <coughs> mm -hmm. So n he dabs in front of us, you know, on FaceTime. <laughs> so that was fun. That's you know, what's up. <coughs> it's a beautiful, beautiful job I have. Word. I love it. Doug, you a big sports fan? No, I don't, I don't watch TV. I don't even know. I don't even know that man basketball. I like, know Cam Newton because he's pop, he popular. Hella popular. But like you don't watch no TV at all, no Netflix, no Hulu, no I Real Housewives. Of, I got of a lot of music to not be a, to not be a TV watcher too. That's a good trade off, you know, because like there's probably a rapper like right now getting ready to go play like you know NBA 2K16, and he probably should be somewhere writing. So yeah, for sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. for sure, you know, um, <clears throat> not many people also know that <clears throat> he loves um, directing and 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 making visual content. In fact, he's going to direct Kate Cobain's um, next single. Word. So That's my man who made uh, Bank Rolls, right? Yeah. I mm -hmm. like I like that kid. Me yeah. too. He's serious. Yeah, yeah. You, got, you got some joints. Yeah, yeah, he's a cutie pie, too. So, you know, the people on Twitter, you know, when we told them we was interviewing uh, Young Thug, they was curious to as where some of these beefs stood that you had in the past. You could just give a status update. Are you and Lil Wayne in a better place now? Uh, yeah, man, I want, man wasn't ever in a... A bad place, at least at least with me. With gotcha. Him, we, we probably was in a bad, 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 a bad place with him because of the stuff he was saying on the internet. But I ain't ever been in a bad place with him. Got gotcha. you. What about you and Game? Y'all had a back and forth going for a minute uh, on social media, it seemed. And you said, what's the status on it? Yeah, I mean, have y'all squashed it? Everything cool? Yeah, we squashed. We we had we we supposed to been squashed. It, you know what I'm saying? But I made a bet to Tip that he was gonna bring it back up. I said, I bet he bring it up. Like I apologized to him, and he did. He brought it right back up. Like I apologize. Tip, I had to give you a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> That's a hell of a bet. Hell yeah. <laughs> well, now what about you and Plies? I think that one's kind of recent, right? Like, uh, how how did that one start? I kind of missed it. Uh, it um, I think my kid, mom. I remember. Okay. The bomb. He he posted a video of your kid uh cursing. Yeah. And, and you felt that was a little out of bounds. Yes. No, the the fit. writing under the bottom yeah. is is what was out of bounds. Cause I posted her too, but yeah. I didn't post what he put. Yeah. Cause it was so funny. She's yeah. like, I'm motherfucking tired. <laughs> I can't be. It, 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 was, it wasn't about the post because right. he didn't start the post. The mom right. did it. So if I'm gonna be furious with somebody, it's gonna be her. Right. Uh, I was just mad cause he what he said mm. under the post. He said the b word. Got you. Right. Too many times. And you know, people telling me that's how they talk in Miami and uh, in in Florida. And I'm like, I understand that, and and I can. I can honestly believe it, but it's but it's still a kid. Exactly, and nah, it's your it kid because we talked to Tip about it too. He was like, "Nah." And it's not if a it talk. Was my kid, you text it, so you, exactly. You, you got can change all, it all the time in the world to mm -hmm. erase it, to delete read it. what you're saying. Right, you're right. It's not like you're on the radio <laughs> uh, interview and you slip up and say something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you right. can think that through, mother. Yeah, and you, you can, can edit you, it as well. It, yeah. <laughs> And you can edit, <coughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And he was like, he, he ain't know it was my kid. I'm like, it could have been the, anybody's kid. kid. That's the kid. same thing Tip said. What's the uh, what's the next Twitter question? Um, that was actually it. They wanted to know about the yeah. beef, so I think we covered that basis. So uh, it's time for the lightning round. I'm gonna throw a couple questions at you. Uh, you say the first thing that comes to your mind, Young Thug. What is your favorite place to shop? Uh, Linux. Lex Moore got it going on. Any particular shop in there? Uh, I 
pense ou avant? Pew. Ils aiment pure. You like pure? Uh, What store yeah, do you like cool. in Lennox? I don't shop in Lennox. They cool though. Oh, you said Lennox. What store you like in Lennox? I like. Neiman Sneaker Marks. stores. Oh yeah, Neiman. Pure right upstairs from Neiman. Yeah, yes, yeah. It's right on top of. They got okay. joints. Zara, yeah. Zara's like a little cheap store, but they got like. Mm. Stuff yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Man, yeah, Zara God bless you if you wear, oh, like, you know, have a size 36 waist or above. They got nothing for you. But if, <laughs> Not like, if you're only eating two meals a day, they got you covered. Yeah. Um, <laughs> last thing you physically broke down and cried about. Uh, my brother going to prison. What's the status on that, man? Is he, uh, is, it, is he getting out anytime soon? Yes, he's coming back up. He lost in trial. That was probably about five, six years ago. It wasn't no money involved, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I put some money into it, and, and now he's coming back up. That's what's up, man. Congratulations on that. Appreciate you. Who's happiest for your success, your mom or your dad? <coughs> Probably my mom. She, because my dad, you know, he got he only got four kids. My mom got 11. Right. You know what I'm saying? And so she, and then the whole 11, I'm the youngest. I'm the one bef right before the youngest. I'm the 10th kid. And the, all of the ones, the whole other nine that was before me, you know, then they graduated and all that, but they wasn't, they ain't never, they wasn't a bread, they wasn't a bread one, you know what I'm saying? So, Got, so you're the go-to guy. Yeah, I'm the man. Like, what's like the, re what's like the basic amount of money people ask you for? Because everybody has like My an family? amount. Yeah. That, that. My mom get probably 15000 a month. My Whoa. My dad probably get Seven five hundred. Cause he used to whoop me a lot of school and all kind of lame shit. So, so you cut him short. Yeah. <laughs> oh. You still hitting him off. That's yeah. like seventy five hundred dollars a month. Like, it, does he still work or is it kind of doesn't have to, right? I won't ever make my mom or dad. Um, kind of nobody in, in my immediate family work because we were just brought up like that. Good for you, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cause like you know, even though you said your your dad was lame and used to kind of like be on your case for the smallest things, you still breaking him off. Of course. You like you. Time. He get an allowance from you now. That's dope. All right. First rap song that you remember from top to bottom. Bless <laughs> you. Thank you. Let's get it to it. Uh, the first song. The first rap song. Man. Like, you know, like the first song that made you fall in love with hip hop. And to this day, you know it from beginning to end. Uh, Probably Wayne, every song. He inspired me. He still is. Word. Any song he have in his life, I know his song. I know his music better than him. I know I do. I'm, I'm willing to bet him too. <laughs> Any so you, song you play for him, I know. I would be scared to bet you. Okay. Nah, cause you seem like you make really good bets. So Hundred thousand. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I bet it. We lost. I know. We'd have to sell some stuff. If we lost the bet to you. <laughs> <laughs> Young Thugger feels the least hip hop when he. You say who? Young Thug feels the least hip. I'm referring to you in third person, like you're not here. But you feel the least hip hop when you. Drunk. What's your drink of choice? Activist. I ain't never even heard of that. What Activist? is that? Activist? What is yeah. that? It's a form of a mix in the code of oh. oh, it's like scissor. Okay. Yep. What is it called? Activist? Yeah. All right, now. Easy, I ain't never man. Heard we don't want to have to stage an intervention, man. I we lost know. a lot of people in that lean, brother. Activist. Yeah, they, they lost a lot of food on that lean. That's <laughs> right. Everything in moderation. Everything right? in moderation. I came from ground zero. I ain't gonna I ain't gonna risk the money at all. There it is. No, that's right. If you could bring one artist back from the dead, who would it be? Michael Jackson. Oh, my. Oh, that's easy. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> and, and MJ you was ill. Too, right? Yeah. He's ill enough to where like, I could totally see it. I could see him doing a song with you. Because, like, oh, you know, like, you know, sick. as weird as he was, and, like, it seemed like he was so disconnected from the world, he always had his thumb on the pulse of what was going on in hip hop. Like, Creative. I was shocked when he did a song with Biggie. Like, he always had his thumb on the pulse. He did a song with Akon, too. What's your favorite Michael Jackson Creative. song? Um, now that's hard. Diana. Diana. Dirty Diana. Diana. <laughs> that's I, what I called Gary the other day. I bet you can't, <laughs> I bet you can't sing the first four <laughs> bars of it. Dirty Diana. Yeah. What you want to bet? Uh, invisible <laughs> bet. I, 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 I bet <laughs> he you, said he put that no hundred thousand. <laughs> I bet you some Confederate <laughs> money, <laughs> man. Like shoot, you got records out, man. Let me say something. I bet you can't say the first four, so it's a bet. A gentleman's <laughs> bet. <laughs> man, I'm about to know. It is Michael Jackson song he plays, Prince. Okay, so so check this out. I, I want to put you on the spot, like, and, and I know you know these songs. Oh, I'm gonna God. fire up a Michael Jackson instrumental. We're just gonna go for it. It's gonna be a random joint. Just give us just can you give us just a little bit of it? Uh, should I, Leo? 
Of course. <laughs> it's it's going to be fun. <laughs> We're only here to make you look your best and give people stuff that they haven't got from you. I don't think no one has an interview with Young Thug singing Michael Jackson. And here we go. <laughs> it's not like Peaches and Green. <laughs> 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 this is the song with him and, I mean, yeah, um... Uh, yeah, the comedian. Yeah, Chris and, uh, yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> Our young thug uh, knows is Michael Jackson. Yeah, of course. He's like, oh, it ain't gay yet. <laughs> he's vibing out. He's feeling it. That beat kind of nice. Slime season four. Slime season. <laughs> Three. Three. No, I'm saying oh. you should put that on Slime Season 4. <laughs> Here you go. Oh, no, it ain't. Oh, it's instrumental. Yeah. Oh, we was waiting on the... Oh, you want me to sing his part? Yeah. <laughs> that was the whole game. Like, like I, I know you can freestyle to it. Were like, yeah. well, you going to freestyle to it? I would. <laughs> <laughs> Should I sing? Go, whatever, whatever you, whatever do you, what you want feel, to do. Whatever makes you feel comfortable. <laughs> Stop it. I can see you later on now. Yeah, <laughs> come on, <laughs> man. Come on, man. You, you, gave us the pump, you gave us the pump fake, man. Yeah. No, he oh, no, did I'm, good. I'm, I'm, you most, did good. Huh? You did good. You was fine. Man, Michael Jackson was fine. Nobody has nodded their head so Michael Jackson beat the way you just did in this studio, and I appreciate you. Michael did what? I said, no one has nodded their head to a Michael Jackson beat the way you just did in the studio, and we appreciate you for that. Yo, Young Thug, the album is called Slime Season 3. The single that we about to blast off right here is called F Cancer. What made you write that joint? Uh, when I seen... I know a lot of people that suffer from cancer, but when I seen Boosie, because, you know, he's still a... He's still a he's, He's kind of like an upcoming artist to me because he's still he's hot and he's still popular. Right. So it's 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 not like a, a down moment, you know what I'm saying? And he's still in in he's still like into the light. He's still like an artist. Right. So it's it, I ain't, I've never seen a, a, a artist with it. I've I've known some of our artists having it, but it's like older artists like Rick James, you know what I'm saying? Bobby Brown, you know. But he's you know what I'm saying? But they they're old. He's he's still in the game. His foot still in the game. So I feel like it was it was kind of crazy. And then you know that's one of my that's my homie. He right. just called me. Matter of fact, uh, that's my homie. And, um, and, uh, I want all my fans to you know it, he inspired me to he he really inspired me. And I just wanted all my fans to like you know what I'm saying to, to keep pushing them and you know what I'm saying and and and, and don't turn down the whole. I did a video for it like last week and the, and the whole video was almost him. Like he, but he's not even on the song. You Word. know what I'm saying? I'm, it's just, it's just inspired by him. You know what I'm saying? And it's featuring Quavo. And I, I was, and uh, you know, one of the main reasons I did it was because I want the, you know, the the, 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 the younger you are, and you, and you deal with it, it's way, way, way better than, you know what I'm saying? The older you are, because early cool detection. Then, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Very, so very the serious. Young youth to, I don't need the young youth to we gotta get, get on it right now. We gotta you know like saying? yearly. Yeah, we need to all go get, get physicals and make sure everything's on the up and up, man. They're putting stuff in the food, man. It's killing us, man. And we don't even know sure. it, man. Yeah. Shout out to Russell Simmons. He has a new book called The Happy Vegan. I recommend everybody go out there and read it. But uh yo, young thug, this is your joint right here, F Cancer. Slime season three is the album. If you was to tell people to go pick it up from a particular place, where would you send them? I would send them to iTunes. Yeah, it is. And don't stream it. Actually, pay for it, man. Throw some money in the hat, like we at church, man. One time for Young Thug. Thug. Yeah. My man, Leo Cohen in the building. 300. 300. Yeah. 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 Yeah.